Good morning, y'all. I'm Marlene Bush, and this is Stitching by the Lake in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Uh, it is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful day here today. It's a little on the windy side. It's cool. It's in the 50s. Going to get up in the 60s, though. Not a cloud in the sky. That is very different from yesterday. <laughs> Several of you texted me and emailed, and I'm I'm so thankful for friends who check up on friends. Um, Arkansas was hit by several uh, catastrophic tornadoes yesterday. I, we may have had a small one touch down on the other side of town from me, but that could have been just wind damage because the wind was horrific. But we did have a major one go right through Little Rock, Arkansas, and then over to the eastern side of Arkansas and uh, hit a town called Wynn, W-Y-N-N. -N. I'm not sure if it has an E on the end or not. It's about 50 miles west of Memphis. Uh, what The last I heard this morning was um, a confirmed five people dead, one in North Little Rock and four in Wynn. Wynn's a small town, um, only a few thousand. Little Rock, of course, is huge. We watched, we, we were watching on television, and we saw the tornado form and watched it travel. It started over in West Little Rock, cut a path through both residential and commercial districts, heavily populated. For those of you that have been to the Shepherd's Needle, you know that's my favorite cross-stitch shop. Uh, it's on a street called Rodney Parham that crosses the 430 bypass, and it's about a half a mile off of 430. I'd say maybe a mile, but not very far. Um, I don't think it's a mile. Anyway, the tornado hit uh, on Rodney Perham, but down a mile or so from the shop. I uh, messaged Ann. They are all okay. Um, but the devastation in that particular area was terrible. Really, really awful. From there, it cut up through... Um, went across the river and up through Sherwood in North Little Rock into Jacksonville. And at that point, that one dissipated. Did a lot of damage in that whole area. Um, I think there are 61,000 people without power in, in that county. Uh, then, I, I don't really know that that one dissipated. It may have been the same one that went on over to Wynn, or that may have been a different one. I'm not sure. I do know that in Wynn, it destroyed their high school. Literally destroyed it. Blew the AstroTurf off the football field, even. Um, and that stuff's really glued down. It, If it didn't destroy, it heavily damaged the Methodist Church, which is right there next to the high school, and I believe the parsonage as well. Um, I have not watch the news on television today. I've, of course, checked it on the internet and that sort of thing. There's a lot of work to be done. Um, a lot of people lost their homes. If not totally, then the whole top half is gone. So, it, in essence, it's totally. Um, there'll be a, a lot of rehoming. There'll be a lot of people with a lot of needs. I'm sure there are some Uh, funds set up. I don't know any particular one, so I can't advise you. I believe the television station, KATV, works with the Red Cross to do that. But I And I'm sure the others do something else, but I don't know what it is. Anyway, I appreciate um, all the checks. Uh, we did I got blankets and pillows and had them all in the bathroom ready, uh, along with my iPad and my book and my phone. 
That's really all I thought was important. Of course, I had my husband sitting there. He really wasn't thinking he was going to go in that bathroom, and he didn't. Um, but it wasn't close enough to us. It went north of where we live that we felt like it was just urgent that we get in there, and we were watching constantly and listening um, to the news and all that. So that's what happened yesterday. So to see today, which is incredibly beautiful, I wish I could show it to you. Um, it's amazing to see the difference. Um, so it's been three weeks since I've been on here. Y'all know I'm erratic with my posting. Um, I really, you know, would like to to do it, uh, to have a regular schedule, but I just am not a regular schedule person, I don't guess. We've had a lot of things going on. Um, Jerry is doing well, for those of you who continue to check on him. We did have a little problem last week. On Tuesday, he was carrying a box of canning jars, empty ones, out to the storage building for me, and going down the steps of the deck, he, I don't know what happened, he misstepped somehow. I had gone down in front of him and turned around to watch him come down because he, he's a little um, off balance at this age. And he either had a misstep or um, got his feet tangled up, I don't know, but he fell down four steps or five. He went face first, um, just like a domino falling flat. Um, the jar, the box of jars went one direction. His glasses went off another direction. The jars, of course, broke into a million pieces. He was stunned. I was terrified. He kept trying to get up, and I kept saying, don't get up, don't get up. Stay there. Uh, because the glass was everywhere, and he couldn't get hit, put his hands down. He couldn't see that there was no glass where he put his hands. So I didn't want him, number one, putting his hands somewhere where he would cut them. He was already bleeding, so I knew he had something going on. And I was afraid he might have broken a hip. My neighbor next door was outside. She and her boys were doing yard work, and she came over and helped him get up, and then um, my our best friends in the neighborhood live a block down, and I called them, and they came down, um, and bless their hearts, cleaned up the glass for us. Um, all three of the neighbors did. Um, one of them took us to urgent care, and uh, where the doc took a look at him, and um, x-rayed his hand and it was not broken but it was cut he had three stitches right in here because we knew that was going to open up every time he moved his hand he had a couple of big huge scrapes on his back about that big around two places that he had just peeled the skin off and of course he was very sore but he was okay um those kind of things really scare you as you get older. I mean, they're they're embarrassing when you're younger, I think. But when you're older, they scare you because your bones are getting brittle and, you know, stuff like that. And you don't know why you fall. And anyway, all is well. All is well. Um, I've told y'all before that we have two hives of bees in our backyard. My son-in-law takes care of them for me, thank goodness. I love the bees. And while Jerry was laying down, we looked up and there was a huge swarm of bees over on a tree. In the spring, bees sometimes leave their hives and go somewhere else. And they're called swarms. And we had a trap out. Um, no, we didn't have a trap out then. Anyway, by the time we got back from the hospital, that swarm was gone. And then a couple of days later, I looked out, and there was another swarm out there in a different spot. And by then, we'd put out a trap, but they didn't go into it. My son-in-law came over, and it's fascinating to watch if you've never seen it. He just kind of scooped them off into that trap, which is really a hive. And they're very docile. 
um, they went in, and they stayed there a couple of days, and then they left. <laughs> they do that, too. We don't know where they went. We've still got the trap out, um, so we're hoping maybe to catch another one. That's a way to get free bees. Um, so that was our escapade with the bees. What else went on here? Let's see. I think that's about it that I'm going to talk about. There's nothing else, really. Just everyday stuff, you know. I'm doing physical therapy twice a week for my back and my hip, which is really helping. Jerry has finished his cardiac rehab. He finished it Monday. And went to the cardiologist on Tuesday, and they cleared him, and he's doing well. Um, I would like for him to do some physical therapy. He would not like to do some physical therapy. Um, I'm hoping that I win that battle, but we'll see. I'm going to give him a little break, and then maybe, maybe he'll be um, a little bit more open to it. I have some fully finished objects to show you. I have a couple of older pieces to show you. I have several whips. I did have, I told you last time I was going to do some new starts, and I did. Several of them. I don't have big starts on them, but I do have starts, and that's what counts, isn't it? Um, I have, last, on the last video, I did a giveaway. There were 10 different patterns, and I'm going to tell you who... Um, the random comment picker chose on those. Frosty's Night Out is Robin Durrett, D-U-R-R-E-T-T. -T. A Painted Lady is Alberta Conti, C-O-N-T-E-E. -E. How Doth the Busy Bee is Sheena Rang, R-A-N-G. Together Forever is Brooke Sellers, S-E-L-L-E-R-S. Hello Summer is Kathy Adams. Gather and Stitch is Jenny Glover. Silver Needle Squirrels is Nancy Wheatley. And Stitching Squirrel is Linda Ackerson. Acorn Basket is Diane Dolha, I think. And then I had a tenth one, which was Witch's Booty. And I had so much trouble with the random picker this time. I think because I use numbers, maybe, that I don't have a winner for that one. Uh, it didn't choose one. So I'm going to do another giveaway later in this. And I will include that one again um, in there. Okay. And those of you who won today... If you would, please email me. I'll put my email address below in the box. Email me with your information, and I will get that in the mail to you this week. Okay? Now, let's talk about fully finished objects. I think once before I showed you a strawberry that I had made from an antique handkerchief, and I had just used a, a little bitty corner of the handkerchief because it was in really bad shape. Well, this time I have another strawberry, but I had a really big uh, handkerchief that was not in bad shape. So I made a really big strawberry and used the flowers. I cut around so that I could use the flowers as much as possible. It did not stuff as well this big, probably because I didn't put enough in there. I added the blue ribbon on the top and a little bunny that I thought was really cute. These are so simple and easy to do. Um, I've, I've got several, and I've got a couple more cut out. Maybe I'll have some more to show you next week. I had last video, I had finished January Wordplay. This is the fifth one of these that I have made. It's a Brenda Gervais pattern. I have not put trim on any of them. I've left them just very plain. Uh, and I have them all in a dough bowl together. I do put the current months on top when I have a current month. But I have several more months to go. Um, I had finished Be Ye Thankful also by Brenda Gervais, which looks like this. 
really a, a nice pattern. I really like this. Um, be ye thankful is what it says. I don't think I made any changes on that one. And this is what I ended up. I did change the trim. Um, I used gold cording that I made from some DMC thread I had. And I added a little sunflower pin. This will be a great pattern, a great uh, pillow to have this fall. And then a couple of the Christmas, small Christmas things that I've shown you before that I worked on, I have FFO'd. This one just says Silent Night. Put a ribbon around the middle and a little rusty bell, and I use the same fabric on the back as the front here. This is another Silent Night. This, this braid I bought, and it, it didn't fray like I wanted it to. See what it did? I don't know. I'm not great with trim. But it's cute, I think. I like the trim. I like the way it looks. I wish it had frayed a little bit better. Maybe there's a trick I don't know about. And then this one says Joyous Noel, and I put it on a frame, just a little frame with an easel and added the red bow and the jingle bell and some rickrack around here. I've still got about five of those that I've not yet FFO'd. I hope that I get some time to work on those this week. Um, let's see. Let me show you this if I don't knock everything off over here. This is a couple of older things. I can't remember if I did this one last year or the year before. Maybe last year. This is a Brenda Gervais pattern. I do not remember the name of the pattern. I am not putting out any Easter decorations this year. They are all stored outside in a storage building, and Jerry and I are just getting to where we are dangerous carrying boxes in and out. And when I don't have someone available to carry them for us, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring them in. Um, and since we've only got two weeks now, gosh, not two weeks, is it? This Sunday is Palm Sunday, so only another week till Easter. But this this one happened to be in the house. I don't know how it got left in here, but. Sometimes I overlook things when I'm packing them up for storage. I really like this one, though, and I can put it up and it'll be easy. Several years, I love wool applique. I, I'm not able to do it as well as I used to because of my fingers, but I made this several years ago. It's a little table mat of strawberries. I thought you might enjoy seeing that. I actually have it on my coffee table. And then I made this little coaster to go with it. Sweet. So, that's my older pieces. And then I have two things. Well, let me show you this before I do that. I thought some of you might like to see this. This was a gift from a friend probably 10 years ago. I absolutely love it. It would be a simple enough thing to make. I don't mean that, you know, her stitching was simple because it wasn't. She did a, a beautiful job. She has incredible stitches. But cross stitch or wool or embroidery on here and she folded ribbon, self-pleating. I mean, you know, she just pleated it with her hands and put it all the way around and put a little back on it and a little hanger. I keep it hanging in here in my sewing room. But wouldn't that be a sweet gift? 
I think it would. I love it. Now, here's, I've got two things, two questions to ask for help in finishing. Y'all have seen my little cats that I was working on, and I think they just turned out so cute. I put them on this little um, tag that I got at Hobby Lobby. But I really think I need some trim. Primarily because it's just a tad bigger right here at the top. And that kind of bothers me. Um, but I do think it needs a little bit of trim. And I can't decide what to do. I've put black rickrack around it and held it there. And it, it doesn't show. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe... It's got some lime green and some bright yellow in here. And I tried both of those. Didn't like them. So I'm wondering, would it be, what would I put here? Got any ideas for a trim there? Let me know if you do. And then the second thing is this punch needle that I finished several months ago. Just a little fall piece and I have some trim fabric for it I had thought I would put just strips of this orange around it a narrow like a binding but no not like a binding um, I don't know what that's called but little strips around it and then put strips of this wider strips around that and make it into a pillow. I don't really want a great big pillow though. Hmm. Let me know what you think. I'd sure like some ideas on that. Okay, it's time to look at whips. Let's see what we've got and see what I can remember that I did. <laughs> I had worked on this one before, so this is truly a whip. This is a Brenda Gervais Spring Frolic at Bunny Hill. I showed it to you last time because I had worked on it some then. And I've worked a little bit more on it. I haven't stitched a whole lot, y'all, in this last three weeks. I'm doing a lot of reading right now. Um, when I go to physical therapy, and I go twice a week, I'm there an hour and a half or two hours. And I come home and I sleep for an hour and a half or two hours. They wear me out, which is good. I'm glad. I like going. They're great. Um, but they wear me out. So, I don't remember what I had done last time. I don't think I had finished the rabbit. And I have finished him and his little scarf and these, um, this little grass. I don't know what that is. And the basket I filled in. So, that's pretty cute. He will not be ready for Easter. I'm fairly certain of that, unless I just get really um, ambitious this week. I can't imagine it, because I've gotten quite lazy. This is a new start, I believe. Yes, a new start. This is the Noel Sampler. Brenda Gervais. I do a lot of her patterns, don't I? This is on 32 count American Chestnut. This is actually one of my favorite fabrics. Really like it. Um, you will too when I finally get it out and show it to you. Um, don't have a whole lot done on it. Like I said, on my new starts, I didn't get a lot. But... I got some of the letters. 
that's really not a true color. At least on my computer, it's not a true color. The letters are showing up quite, quite well on here. It's lighter than what it's showing, the fabric is. It's got a good feel to it, and it needles very well. This one is a new start. It's a Blackbird Designs pattern, Humming of the Bees. Isn't that pretty? I know a lot of people like peacocks. I'm not crazy about peacocks. A lot of birds on there. Little bitty birds. But there is a bee scap, so for sure he's going to stay. I may change something else, but it won't be that. This is on 32 count hog bristle. And I worked on the top border of that. And this is how far I've gotten. Again, the color of the fabric's not really showing up correctly today. It's bright outside. Uh, I do have blinds on the windows, but I've also got a lamp on right above this, and I don't know if that's what's affecting it or not. This is a much bigger piece of fabric than I'm going to need, but I decided just not to cut it until I was sure what the parameters were because I didn't need it for anything else right now. Sometimes these patterns fight me trying to go back in the bag like, like a kid that doesn't want to get in the bed. Well, fiddle, I'm just going to leave that out. Maybe it won't disappear on me. This is Francis Poole. It is on a 32 count parchment. It's a Brenda Gervais pattern. Thirty-two counts what I'm primarily stitching on right now. I have done some 36, 35. I'm not crazy about that. Um, this is a Weeks Dye Works fabric parchment is. And I, again, just worked on a border. I don't know from this point, this gives me about 30 or 32 whips. What I think I want to do is work on a different one every day. That doesn't actually mean I will do that, of course. You understand. That's just what I think I want to do right now. <laughs> this one, love this. Sarah Garrard by Needlework Press. This pattern was a gift from a friend. And I started up in the upper left-hand corner and worked on the border. Let's see, did I tell you what this fabric was? 32 count prairie grass. And I think it's really, really close to this picture. I don't know that we could have gotten any closer to that.
Oh yes, this is the day. Plum Street. And this one is on a 32 count Mayflower. This is the latest one that I've worked on actually. Looks like this. There are going to be some changes made to this one. But I don't know yet what they're going to be. Um, I started actually at the bottom, which I never do. But I knew that I wanted the bottom, the verse. I knew I wanted that in there just like it is. So I started there. What I think I'm going to do, I don't know if you could see it. and those, Many of you have stitched it already. Right here, there's a goat. Now, I don't know why Paulette put a goat up there in the air. But I, I'm not crazy about that goat. So, I'm not going to stitch him. I'm going to lower the sun. And I'm going to extend and lower the smoke on this chimney to go out a little farther. And then lower the top border just a bit. Not much. A couple of stitches. At least that's my plan. Do y'all uh, use sachets in your drawer with your clothes or in your closet? I do. And I have a favorite, of course, that I buy from uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. It's called Seascape, maybe? I think it's called Seascape. And this sweater that I have on must have been hanging right above one that I laid in there because every time I move, I get a whiff of it, and it smells so good. Um, this is Ada Bilson by Blackbird. Oh, no, that's not true, Marlene. This is a joyous day. It's got the wrong tag on it. Take that off. Oh, joyous day. There you go. And it is on, what's it on? A great big, huge piece of fabric. <laughs> ACLL 38 Waste. W-A-Y-C. Maybe it, that's not. 38 count. W-A-Y-C. E. Maybe. I don't know. But it's gorgeous. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Look at this border. I mean, this fabric is awesome. I might need to call Ann and get some more of that. Because I really, really like that. Mmm. I think I'm going to leave this out and... I didn't buy anything this last month. I don't think I bought anything in February. Well, now I have to kind of take that back, sort of, but not really. A friend gave me a gift certificate to 123 Stitch, and I did buy some stuff from them with my gift certificate. But that wasn't my money, so that doesn't count, right? And thank you very much to my friend. These are my French country pieces that y'all have been seeing for a while. But y'all, I've made progress. I have finished the first three books. And I have only one more to, to do, December 19th through 25th. So seven more, and I'll be through with this. Um, Merritt Crawford, for, I'm trying to think of her floss tube, just because Buzz uh, loaned me this pattern. 
and I've taken an inordinately long time to get them done, but I'm working on them still. Number 18 I did this time, and I may have done 17 this time. Can't remember. Maybe just 18. Anyway, I'm not finishing these until they are all completed. I did order a little bit more fabric because I was pretty sure I was going to run out. Oh my goodness, one of these I have pulled all the threads out and laid them up here, and I don't know which one it was. I'll have to look back through there and see which one doesn't have any threads in it. And then this is my last whip. And it's another new start. This happy morning. Plum Street. This is another one I'm going to make some changes on, but I'm not sure what yet. I think this green is beautiful, but there's so much of it. And so I'm thinking about taking out some of the leaves right here and putting Yea, Lord, we greet thee up here, right there. And then stopping the green like below the second level right there and raising the border. It just seems awfully large to me. And this one is on... 32 count antique ivory. And again, I've worked on the border. And there you go. Pretty colors. Easy stitching. There's quite a lot of it, but it's easy stitching. <gasps> Ooh, is it spring where you are? It's spring here, and we got lots of pollen. Lots of pollen. Okay, I'm going to put these back in the basket real quick, and then I'm going to show you what patterns I'm giving away today. And then I think we'll be through. Okay, for today. Some of these are older. Some of these have been given to me to share with y'all. Some of them are things I had and am not going to stitch or have already stitched. I don't know which. This is, now let me say this and, and let's get it really clear. Um, I'm, I'm going to do something different than I did last time. I've got numbers on these, but I want you to spell out the numbers. Please don't use for instance, the one, don't just use the one, spell it O-N-E, comma, four, F-O-U-R, whatever you're choosing, and you can choose as many as you want. This is number one, and it is the Perman calendar. Now, Kim Goldman, I know you're going to want this. I probably should just pull it. And send it to you because it's all birds. Look at this. All birds. Here they are. One. I pull except I've already showed it to you. Darn. Okay. Number two. T-W-O. Uh, Halloween truck from Twin Peak Primitives. Two, T W O. Number three, T H R E E, is from Heart and Hand, and it is an acorn sampler. Number four, F O U R, is We Gather Together from Summer House Stitchworks. Number five, F I V E, is, uh, Okay, I gotta think for a minute. Um, Lady Dot Creates at 
Quilter Station brought us a kit with it to show this little pumpkin. I have used the kit, so there's nothing in here but the directions on how to do this. Okay, number five, F I V E. Okay, number six, S I X, is from the Stitcher Hood, and it is Blessings. This is such a cute one. Number seven, S E V E N, it is a French pattern from Le Point de Croix.com. And it's Christmas teapots. Isn't that cute? Seven, S E V E N. This is a book, and it's number eight, E I G H T. It's called Charted Peasant Designs from Saxon, Transylvania. It's an older book. It has a lot of patterns in it. All different kinds. Um, wall hangings and plates and pillows, it says. This was published, let me see if I can tell you that, because I, it is an older book. 1964. Okay. Eight, E-I-G-H-T. Number nine, N-I-N-E, is a group of patterns that were given to me. They're sampler stockings by Mary Beal, and I know a lot of y'all really like these. They're all, uh, they all have Christmas religious themes, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six of these. Here's one. Um, and Joseph also went from Galilee to the city of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. This one says, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. This one says, and there were in the same country shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night. This one says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. This one says, And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby lying in a manger. And this one says, And they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So there are six of these patterns, these little booklets in this folder. And this is number nine, N-I-N-E. This is number 10, T-E-N, and it is called Fine Lines. It is a 17th century inspired sampler, and this was printed in the fall of 2001. Again, my email will be uh, in the bottom if any of you need to ask a question, but otherwise just put the word for the number into your comment at the bottom. Okay, let me look at my notes and see what I've done. That's it. That's it. That's all I've got. Um, I hope you all are well. I hope that the spring storms don't get to you. Um, and thank you again for the uh, folks that checked on us and wanted to make sure that we were doing okay. Um, it is so good to have friends from afar um, that, that email and say, okay, tell me you're okay. <laughs> it was really sweet. And I appreciate it. And I love you each and every one. Y'all have a good weekend and a good coming week and stitch a lot, okay? Bye-bye.